mean, obviously, there's a lot of corporate influence. People, you and I really have, how many people here feel like you're really heard by your representative? And how many of you people believe that, how many of us believe that our representative who hears us then goes and votes in accordance with his or her constituents? And who's your rep? McDermott. No, Levin. Levin? Huh. Well, there's one. What? McDermott actually passed out 9-11 dollars. Have you all seen those 9-11 deception dollars? To every member of the, rep, of the Senate House which is very cool. We'll show you deception dollars later. So, so for, if our government structure the way that it's set up right now is not working, what is it going to take for us to enact any sort of social change in the United States? And my opinion is it's going to take a massive uprising of the people, absolutely saying no more. No more. You basta. This is it. We're not doing it. And I don't really know what that'll look like. I think all of us are thinking that through. What would it look like for the people to really stand up and say, absolutely not. We're not going to allow this anymore. But as long as carrying a constitution is evidence that you're a terrorist or speaking out is, means that O'Reilly is going to call you a traitorous, um, you know, anti-American, anti-patriotic, slime ball, nutcase, fruitcake, and they bring on people continually onto those shows to show us that this is what uh, dissenters look like. They're all fruitcakes, which is obviously the goal of that. Then the people can't rise up, and they can't take back their power, and they can't begin to express power for most of us who never in our lifetimes have ever done that, f for the most part. So, as, so to me, one of the most critical effects of 9-11, the way it's been used on us, is by keeping dissent... Uh, from happening. And for any of these movements to succeed, we're going to have to have popular, massive popular dissent. And whether that's going in the streets or it's firing your media, starting new media, going out and teaching people about the Bill of Rights and what it is that we're losing, reaching out to other groups to talk about the issues that are all the same, whatever that popular uprising, and I'm not calling for revolution because I don't think it'll take that. I think an uprising of the people meaning we're not taking it anymore, we're not going to approve of this, we're just not going to participate in the structure that is beating us down, we're going to step away from it and quit holding up the structure that's beating us down. And people can't do it when they're scared to death. When, obviously one of the first things that came after 9-11 was that Muslims were rounded up, indiscriminately rounded up. We don't know how many were rounded up, and we don't know whether they're all released. We think not, and we clearly know about Gitmo, and we know about secret prisons in other countries because, well, they're secret, and we can't really know about them, and we can't know how many people are there, and, but they're really bad guys. They're evildoers, and they want to kill us. Now, we can't bring them to trial because we can't let you hear what they say because that affects our national security, but you really have to trust us that these are really bad guys. They really want to kill all of you. They're going to come to American soil and kill you. And so we're just going to stick them away in these prisons that you can't know exist. And of course it's not in keeping with the Geneva Conventions or any of the other treaties we signed. But these are really perilous times and you really have to trust us. And don't ask because we can't tell you because then you'd be in more danger. Right? So the whole thing is just this crazy making. So when Muslims are picked up right after 9-11, that was the beginning. I see that moving into other immigrant groups now, and it's been a slow and steady progress. But with the Don Hutto detention facility where families, including their children, are picked up and stuck indefinitely with no charges, with no hearings, with no right to get out. And some of their children, can I point out, as a mother of six, have been taken from them and put into state foster care. Now, I'm outraged over that. It makes me absolutely crazy that anybody would take some loving family's two-year-old and give them to foster care because they're not from the U.S. It's, we, we, right now, we have to stand up right now. There are two of those detention facilities, and I don't think there's a single American. This is all about American values, and we have to protect our values. And you know, they want to kill us because of our freedoms and our values, and yet our values mean that you can take, ch I mean, really, that's my little passion for the moment here, but this business of taking children and families and locking them, we did this before in the U.S. We don't learn that in history class either. And 
you know, we've signed conventions and treaties saying Japanese and Germans, that's right. And, and oh, there was the issue of Native Americans. So a few other groups, right? So, um, so dissent has led from this picking up the Muslims to now picking up anyone indiscriminately, really. And because the Military Commissions Act that has been passed, is, is there anybody not familiar with the Military Commissions Act? It's, um, okay, it was uh, passed on uh, what Senator Leahy called the darkest day in American history. It um, set up military tribunals. Uh, well, the, the real core piece of the Military Commissions Act is that anyone can now be determined to be an unlawful enemy combatant by the president. And he never has to give any evidence, never has to give any evidence, and we never get a hearing and there aren't any charges, and any of us, including Americans, according to the constitutional attorneys, can now be put in camps or wherever they put us indefinitely with no possibility for hearings. So that's, it's that serious. I mean, it is now possible for any American, any immigrant, any, anybody, anywhere to be picked up because George had a bad day. Or not really, but w they don't have to show any evidence. So. That's the Military Commissions Act, and personally, I don't think anything like that would have passed. We've had heinous laws come and go, obviously. But when Leahy said, this is the darkest day in American history, that, and, not, and that passed without a whimper, other than him, and there was one other senator who stood up. And Americans really didn't hardly take note of it. There were a few constitutional attorneys, um, scholars, Jonathan Turley, um, John Dean, who spoke about it. But it just seems that at some point Americans would say, hell no, that is not an American value. I'm not, that doesn't represent me. Who is doing this? It's not China where you're forced to show your papers because somebody says it. Well, now it is, because now you have to show your papers when somebody says, show me your papers. You know, there's a lot of things happening in the United States, and there's an utter lack of outrage. You know, I mean, among a lot of us, there's outrage. We send it on and go, oh my God, can you believe this? Or we pick up the phone and go, you got to read these headlines. But generally speaking, in the American population, the newspapers, on NPR, I mean, our alternative radio even, and there's telling more and more news that seems to be sneaking out. But it, it's astounding that there is not absolute utter outrage right now over these things that have been passed. Following on the heels of that, the Warner Defense Authorization Bill included a provision that the National Guard now reports to George Bush, whether the governors like that or not. Now, all 50 governors are opposed to that, but it stands nonetheless that now if George says jump, the National Guard has to, whether the state governor to whom the National Guard is supposed to report says so or not. So we already saw in Katrina, with Katrina, that the National Guard wasn't there. And um, the, actually, we heard National Guard persons serving in Iraq and Afghanistan whose hearts were breaking because they wanted to come home and take care of their families, which is what they signed up for the National Guard for, in part. I mean, that's the good part, the hero part of the Guard, is that you get to take care of your own community when they need it. And they couldn't because they're over there doing what they're doing over there. And then recently in Greensburg, Kansas, which is, I'm from Kansas City, and I actually have family out there, an F5 tornado came through and utterly demolished the entire town. And <clears throat> the governor of Kansas is actually speaking out quite a bit, I think it was even on national media, that we're down to 56% of our National Guard and our equipment in Kansas. So she was unable to mount a, a proper response to the people's needs in Greensburg because the, the National Guard is gone. So the issue is that if the National Guard resp reports to the president rather than the governors, you know, that causes a whole lot of problems. If the National Guard is gone and there really is a national emergency, who is it that will come in and um, provide the needed services to Americans? Blackwater. Blackwater. <laughs> we saw it in Katrina. And honestly, Blackwater is not the neighbors of the people in New Orleans or the people in Greensburg. They're paid military contractors, 
many of them are paid mercenaries. So if our military is gone, and the control of the National Guard has been passed on to George W. Bush directly, and the governors have no say, then it should cause some concern in America that people like Blackwater mercenaries can show up to provide us food and water and martial law. So who's going to be providing the order in the streets? It's not our neighbors and our brothers and our cousins and our sisters who are in the National Guard. It's going to be paid contractors. So all of these things, I'm painting a horribly dark picture, which is not really where this started to go. But my, my point was these things are outrageous, out-freaking-rageous. It should not, everybody in the whole, and the rest of the world is sending me emails as executive director. What are you people doing? Don't you see what's happening in your country?